Yeah. Abby, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. I told you before about this. I told you, you, you know, you can't see the people. You can't see the, the, you know, the people watching us by looking inside the camera lens. It only works the, the other way. They can't see. You can't see them. Do you understand that? Okay. So, so stop getting this in front of the lens like that. Hey, Happy. You know what we should do right now? We should go ahead and uh, show some footage from the old WBMW episodes. You remember those episodes? You do, you do remember those, don't you? Where Dave W. Johnson, the kitchen magician, the culinary conjurer of Milltime Magic. You remember him? You do remember him, don't you? Because he shut you in a refrigerator. That wasn't very nice. Have you guys made up? You you have made up? Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and show some footage from his old show, WBNW. It's a representation here on the Happy Show. <laughs> Superman Museum in Metropolis, Illinois. Over here is the uh, evolution of the Man of Steel. Superman's uh, been on just about every type of toy you can imagine, from uh, you know cereal premiums to well, it's all here. Just about anything. This is a representation of my animation collection. I have over 10,000 animation cells oh, wow. in my collection. And here you see a small representation. Where there's about 40 or 50 of them here. This is a Superboy uh, area here. Superboy, they did 100 episodes. It was the same production company, the Salkinds, that did the Superman movies with Christopher Reeve. So, of course, they got a... A guy that, that looked a lot like Christopher Reeve looked like looked when he was a little younger. And, uh, we got Brazaro, oh, great. one of the more favorite uh, characters in the uh, Superman uh, legend. And then a lot of food products here, lunch boxes, a lot of early lunch boxes, um, uh, pasteurized cheese, peanut butter, oh, uh, just tons of cookies, pretzels, you know, fruit punch, milk, food snacks. <laughs> oh yeah, just all kinds of different food, Ziploc bags, vitamins. Lots of board games, uh, old and new, from the Superman movies to, uh, you know, Superman, oh, wow. uh, Spinball, Pinball, uh, just uh, all, a load of uh, board games and so on with the uh, super, Superman image. This is my ugly figure case. This is some <laughs> of the, most, the ugliest Superman figures uh, that, that, I, that I have in my collection. And some of them are really just very homely. All this stuff relates to the Superman movies with Christopher Reeve. Of course, there were four films, uh, the first one being the best one. And kind of went downhill from there. But uh, two wasn't bad. There's a lot of fighting and action scenes in that. Yeah. This is a, one of the props. This was a Statue of Liberty oh, wow. that was used in Superman 4. And uh, a lot of uh, fan-made uh, models and, uh, and garage kits, we call them, made by uh, fans that have donated them to the museum. Those are newspapers uh, where you, were actual props used in the Superman movies. Wow. There's a Christopher Reeve, uh... You got stuff all over the ceiling, though. Oh, yeah, there. hanging from everywhere. Yeah, everywhere, anywhere I can find space. <laughs> That's the original Superman uh, Christopher Reeve wow. costume. Wow. Uh, one of those just sold at Christie's auction last month for about $56,000. This is an actual cape? This is yeah? a cape signed by Christopher Reeve. Oh, wow, incredible. Yeah, nice uh, cape from the first movie. And these are the original power crystals, one from each movie. Oh, my, the, uh, yeah, the cubes. Yeah, the... yeah Marlon Brando uh, used the one, the smaller one in the back, the green one, and uh, the rest, one was on the left, was used to build a Fortress of Solitude. The large green one was used in Superman 4. And then I've got the uh, kryptonite. If you look over here, you see where, where uh, Richard Pryor hands Superman synthetic kryptonite. I have that as well over here. Okay. I'll show you in a second. And we've got General Zod's costume. He was the villain in Superman the movie, and he was also in Superman 2. Both those movies uh, were, were filmed simultaneously. And a lot of the uh, advertising material from all, you know, from Japan, Australia, all over the world. Uh, we've got the original Marlon Brando S insignia up there on the oh, left. Wow. And uh, m movie props. Uh, you know, there's a brick wall that was uh, used in uh, far. There's Christopher Reeve's flying harness. 
Well, they actually wore that in the... Yeah, they wore this under his costume. They put him up on wires and pulled him up 200 feet in the air. Wow. There's a wreath here. And here's the a piece of kryptonite, uh, synthetic kryptonite from oh. Richard Pryor okay. to Christopher Reeve in the third movie. And this, uh, this is uh, uh, cameras that were... Uh, Mark McClure, who was here uh, this weekend. Oh, wow. Uh, these are his uh, prop cameras. A lot of 50s merchandise, uh, 40s, early 40s merchandise of crypto ray got a lot of advertising. They put these uh, advertisements in the cost with the costumes telling kids that uh, once they put the costume on, you know, they can't fly, so don't be jumping oh, off the roofs or anything. Too bad. And uh, gum cards and uh, patches and additional puzzles. These are a lot of 50s, uh, 50s and 60s merchandise. There's actually more. That, that book just sold last year for 200,000 cash. That's an original? Uh, no, that's a, that's a facsimile. Yeah, original, I wouldn't. $200,000 comic book. I don't <laughs> wouldn't put in there. No. The phone booth was given to me by Kirk Allen. Oh, incredible. First man to portray Superman in motion pictures. So we're coming into the George Reeves section. These are belts from his black and white costume mm -hmm. and belts from his uh, color costume. Half of them were filled in black and white, half in color. And this is his, uh, his Clark Kent glasses along with, uh, with his handkerchief, which has uh, got embroidered GR on it, George Reeves, and one of his hats. Advertising material, books and so forth from the show. One of Clark Kent's, uh, George's Clark Kent breakaway shirts. Uh, wore that under his suit. And here's an original George Reese costume from 1956. Oh, and that's made out of 100% wool. It's got his latex muscles under it. And uh, the value of that's running in at about 125000 now. Caught up with Mike Carlin. He is the, uh, you are an editor? I'm the executive editor you, of the DC Universe. The executive editor of the DC <laughs> Universe. Now, can you explain to some of the viewers out there what you're executive editor of the DC line of comic books. And yeah, I do all the superhero comics. I supervise a team of editors who all then individually work with either Superman or Batman or Wonder Woman, uh, Green Lantern and Justice League, characters like that. Uh, I was the direct editor of Superman for 10 years, uh, probably most infamous for killing Superman. So you're the man. Don't get me mad. It's uh-oh. <laughs> uh-oh. Can you, um, people may not know, you are standing next to the typewriter that um, yeah. It was, um, Jerry Siegel. Jerry Siegel's typewriter. Very cool. He actually he typed some of the early scripts of Superman on that. That's what they say. So that is over 60 years old. That's yeah. where. This is where history is made, right? That's that's incredible. It's really amazing. This museum is unbelievable. Uh, I, I thought I had a lot of Superman stuff at home, <laughs> but not even close. Now, which Superman is your favorite, probably? Oh, uh, you know, it's it's hard to say. Uh, I really, the Christopher Reeve Superman movie as a whole is such a great movie, but I grew up with George Reeves. Uh, personally, my favorite translation of Superman the film is the Warner Brothers cartoons that are being done. Uh, oh, hey, yeah, great. Well, yeah. I think both Batman and Superman have never been better on film, personally, so uh, I guess it's uh, Tim Daly. <laughs> Can we expect a... Um uh, Batman Beyond and Superman Adventures to be um, running a syndication for a while? Or? I would imagine. I mean, that's not really under DC Comics' uh, authority, but mm -hmm. uh, I think Warner Brothers and the WB Network has had a lot of success with that stuff. Because the cartoons are great, like you said. Okay, I know a little bit about the comics. Can you give us any insight to what's going to happen here? Why is Lois Lane going crazy for and leaving Clark Kent after they're married? And Because that happens every now and then when you're married. I don't know if you've been married yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But that does happen. Now, this is, uh, there is definitely a, uh, a, a punchline to this storyline that will be hopefully surprising. Oh, and, uh, yeah. Interesting. That's what comics are all about, is, is the punchline. That's what keeps us coming back every month reading them. It's true, and we, that, we, I hate to blow the endings of stories, because they, they are stories. Well, keep us in suspense. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Carlin, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Nice to meet you.